First of all, to start my presentation, I would like to say a quote from Steve Jobs about design principles. Design is not just how it feels or how it looks, it's how it works. First of all, who are we? As you can see on the screen, we are a team of four people. So what does it do? Our app, called Song Surge, basically takes data from BBC Radio 1's playlist and creates a visual, a beautiful but visual representation allowing music to be discovered with ease. The key concept, so what we aim for, everybody wants a simple and easy website to use. Also, it displays additional information about who created that song and we allowed the user to watch that song there and then. Also, we had an awesome design. This had a big effect on our website, which I'll pass on to Lewis to discuss with you. So when we were designing our interface, we really were going for this uh, tiled interface. So when we were designing our, our concept, we were thinking of uh, design thinking. Now, this is a new thing uh, that's been pushed uh, around the world and uh, if you don't know what design thinking is I'll just explain it to you it's matching people's needs with what is technologically feasible and viable as a business strategy now that might not mean a lot to you but basically we took them concepts and we listened to people and we found out what they wanted we found out patterns from that uh, information that they're given us we then took the design principles and uh, then, then principles kind of emerged from there. And then we made a tangible thing. Now, this wasn't particularly uh, a high, big thing, but we wanted to uh, develop something that was uh, initially pushed out there, and then we could build that f further on. So, like I said, when we were building our design, we wanted this tiled interface. Now, you might be wondering what this tiled interface is about. Well, we wanted to display data in a new way. So we could have used charts and that sort of stuff, but we just decided that we wanted something that was easy and simple for everybody to understand. So we designed this tiled interface. So let me just explain this to you. We have big album art and we have smaller album art. Now, depending on the size of the album art, that describes how popular that song is. So what design concepts were we going for with this? Well, we were really pushing re for responsive design and multi-browser browser awesomeness, <laughs> which is obviously a technical term I've come up with. <laughs> so we wanted everybody to be able to access it from any device. We, you know, you want to be on your phone and navigating around on your phone, or you want to be on the web. It doesn't matter because we wanted this to work on everything. Now you can see that the whole design is responsive and that means that it'll slot onto any device. So, what design language were we using? Well, we were pushing for a flat and minimalistic design. Now, what is flat and minimalistic design, you may be asking? Well, let me just tell you two little things. Basically, flat design, as described by the internet, is highly modern, stylistic designing technique that just works. It's an excellent platform to base our web app on. Now, I have a quote from Matt Bale. He says, design is about making things good, and then better, and right, and fantastic for people who use and encounter them, which is something we were really pushing for. So. OK. Um, so we were pushing uh, various data uh, into our app, and uh, we were using a mixture of Radio 1, Last FM, uh, Wikipedia, and YouTube. So we used Wikipedia and YouTube for our uh, video, and we used um, Radio 1 and Last FM to pull all the song information. Usability was key for us, so we used basic design. This is one of our first concepts, and another one. And here's our final design. So you can see that was something we were really pushing from the beginning. So what do we think about the future? Well, 
we obviously are using Radio 1 as of current, so it's already available for Radio 1. But we could push it to service like Spotify, which they could do the similar thing with Spotify, or YouTube, so they could display it in video format instead. Or just news sources to push it to something completely different. News stories could be presented with the same interface. So I'm going to pass you on to Tim. He is going to talk a little bit more about code for you and uh, what we did in that aspect. Okay, so hello, I'm Tim, and as Lewis said, I did a large amount of coding on this project. Uh, we encountered a few interesting issues which I thought I'd just mention now. Um, firstly, we're using the BBC data set, which is the track listings published on iPlayer with each program that's broadcast. And um, there was basically no API for that. Um, we requested the general API keys in the BBC and never got one, and the documentation was all a bit broken and there were broken links everywhere. Um, so we basically wrote a program that goes through each web page and goes through each link and just analyzes what's there and then pulls out the data it can get. And that seems to work quite well. It takes quite a while, about half an hour to show up the site. It seems to work. Um, we also use YouTube, and we just perform a search for that song. Um, but they were initially geolocating us by our IP, and our server's located in Germany. So we were searching German YouTube and getting some really, really weird results. <laughs> OK, so now for a quick demo. So you can see here, everything should load up and fades in. So rather than having images that sort of slowly load in, they all fade as they load. Um, so as you can see here, each song is sized depending on how many times it's been played. And you can change the time range that's shown using this drop-down menu here. And if we scroll down and choose a song, we had a pop-up, which contains the album art from Last FM, uh, the song title and the artist, uh, a small bit of information from Wikipedia, and then a YouTube player, which allows you to preview the song. But sadly, we can't do that here due to copyright restrictions. OK, so thank you for listening. Um, we're happy to take any questions. Do you record any data as, uh, when people actually use it to see what they to sort of trend to what they like or identify what they like? Uh, so yeah, the idea was that um, you'd be able to go on there and without sort of faffing around with other things that sort of take data from you, it just provides a very, very quick way of finding out the exact kind of music that's very, very popular right now. Um, we could also add other stations in the future from Radio 1, apart from Radio 1, so, you know, other BBC stations or other data entirely. Could you search for the music by genre? Uh, yes, yeah, so we could also implement something like that, especially with the different shows that are put on there. Currently, you can't do that. But that could be quite easily implemented, and especially with sort of daytime and nighttime, because they tend to vary genres entirely there. And the BBC does publish the exact genre of each show. So that would be very easy to implement. Is it, is it possible also to flip it around and say, um, search for music which is from new artists? Um, which may not be very popular. The icons will be quite small. Uh, that could be fairly easily implemented. It's just a database search. We just search for the top 100 songs and then display those to you. We could just search for the bottom 100 songs and do the exact same. You talked about um, user groups providing feedback. So describe a bit more. How d who did you talk to? Um, so we spoke to various young people, mainly as we're obviously targeting it towards Radio 1. And they were saying that they use various things, you know, that allow them to discover new music, but they require you input sort of preferences or they just listen to the radio and hear what's on. But you can never really get an overview of what's popular right now. And we thought that Radio 1, obviously, they put a very, very, very large amount of time and effort into choosing the exact playlist, so there must be quite a valuable data source there. And did you involve them in the user design itself? Um, yeah, so we sort of spoke to them, as I said, and they said they wanted something simple and quick. Rather than spending ages going through menus and stuff, they wanted some way of just clicking on a song, hearing it, rather than faffing around and going between lots of different services. Any other questions for judges? Did you measure any usage? Pardon? Did you measure any usage? Like, did you do any observational testing when people, watching people use it and see what, see what they did with it? Well, um, we did look at what people were doing. We pulled out a few uh, prototypes of the design, and a few were really good, and some of them, people were just getting confused and asking us loads of questions. Uh, so we kind of took uh, what was best from each one, and basically just, we ended up just taking a load of stuff out just to make it really, really simple for people to use. Thank you. Thank you.